Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Wanted to chat today about how difficult all this stuff really is and, and how hard it is for people who aren't going through this to understand this. And I, I know this is a topic that I've hit before and it's a reoccurring topic, but I think it's important to, I think it's important to address periodically because you can get caught up in this disillusionment, I'm saying that right, where y you don't understand why this is so damn difficult or why it's taking you so much time. Everyone else around you is probably telling you, you know, just, just let it go. You just got to get your life back. Get back out there and get on the horse. And you're sitting there wondering what in the world's wrong with you because you're stuck thinking about this person. You're stuck ruminating about the past and you're not making any progress or you're making very little progress. And then you sit there and you try to equate it to what other people are going through and what other people are telling you. And, and, and let me just hit the first part first. If you are looking at other people who've had normal relationships, normal breakups, and no breakup is going to be fun. I mean, that's, that's a given. But you'll see other people who have a breakup. They're sad about it. They get depressed. And then they get over it. And then it's, it, it is, doesn't have this hold on them as it does with you. And then you're looking at it going, what the hell is wrong with me? You know, you're looking at the situation trying to figure out why. And it's, a, it's, it's tough because you're already questioning everything that's going on. You're already really trying to figure things out and work it out in your head. And, and it doesn't make any sense. And, and you're looking at your own life and... And thinking, you know, man, why am I not able to get over this? I mean, it's been two months, six months, a year, 24 months. And you're sitting there and you're still feeling worn out, drugged down. And like you're not making any progress. Now, the thing I want to say is when you start having that much time... You don't see the progress you've made. And it feels really minuscule or non-existent. So it, it, if I'm saying, if what I'm saying right now is resonating with you, I, I would ask you to think back to week one of your situation or the first couple of weeks and really think about it and say, okay, am I in the exact same spot that I was in then. Now there's a caveat when I'm saying that because if you're watching this video and you're having a downtime, you might think, well yes, I am. I do feel the exact same way. Here's the nuance that you have to look at. Typically in the first few weeks of this, every moment of every day is just painful. It's just like you you know you you wake up in the morning and you feel like crap. Throughout the day, you feel like crap. The end of the day, you feel like crap. You go to bed, you're feeling like crap. If you're journaling, you're writing the same thing over and over and over again. And it feels like a nightmare. Well, it is a nightmare. However, that does tend to dissipate and instead of having, you know, let's say if you're awake for 16 hours or 18 hours, in the early part of it, those 18 hours all would have been crap. Now you're probably having some good times. You're probably having a glimpse of the past you. And it's important to recognize that because when you're feeling down, you're going to think that that pain that feeling that you have at that particular moment is going to be your forever. 
it's really hard to see glimmers of hope in the middle, or not in the middle, but when you're going through this. I guess technically it would be the middle. So, if you're farther along and you're having a down day or down week or whatever, that's what you have to look at. You have to look at it and say, okay, well, do I always feel this way? Am I always feeling this bad? More than likely, if you're honest with yourself, the answer will be no. Now, I say with being honest with yourself because there's a strong likelihood that you're probably, if you're in the middle of that down part, you're thinking that this is your forever and that any of those good moments were just fake and you were disillusioning yourself and it wasn't, you know, that wasn't real, but this pain and this sorrow and this this heartache and this just muck is your, is your new reality. And it, it won't be forever. And the other part about this is that if you're early into this, please don't take the the idea like, oh my God, I may have to take six to months to two years or so to, to heal from this. Don't look at it that way. And I, and I say that because I know in the beginning part of it, when people would say, you know, you'd read those stupid things that said, well, if you've been married for, you know, 10 years or 20 years, then you should, it's going to take you half the time to recover. Or I can't remember what the number was. All I remember was when I looked at that saying, oh my God, I'm going to feel like crap for six or seven years. And it wasn't that long. I mean, I didn't feel like crap for that long, but it was one of those things where I'm like, oh my God, this is going to, this is going to have a lingering effect. My point about that is, is that it gets better with time. You know, and the more work you do on yourself, the faster that you'll speed this along. Now, now, keep in mind, when I was going through this, I didn't have channels like this. I didn't have information about narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships and, and how that affects you and, and the ways you deal with that. So I was at a significant disadvantage back then. Hopefully, with the with the plethora of channels that are out there now, hopefully you're you're getting something from my channel and maybe other people's channels. And hopefully that is giving you hope that this isn't going to last forever. So the other thing on this is, is that I know I've talked about this recently, but you got to remember that these type of relationships are such a mental mind F that it's not easy to get over. It adds extra complexity to it. You're not going to be able to sit down with the person and say, hey, what happened? Let's do a post-mortem. Where did things go wrong? You know, let's have some closure because a narcissistic person will never give you closure. They will always continue to screw with your mind and try to play mind games and try to try to gaslight you and try to play on your cognitive dissonance on what's going on so you constantly are second guessing yourself. Couple that with the fact that in the beginning you were love bombed, you were mirrored, they became and morphed into the person that you wanted them to be. They became the perfect person for you. They mimicked everything that you thought you wanted or needed or expected in a relationship. So it was like a drug. You you got a taste of something, but it wasn't real. So now you're stuck in this situation to where you're trying to, to, to wean yourself off of it. And your brain's going, but no, it's no, no, no. It was good. It was, it was real. This was real. Now I get not everybody on the channel is dealing with this, but I do think that this is probably like a good 75% of the people on this channel to a man and a woman are, have that problem. The same problem I had, you know, I, uh, some other people, when they break, they're able to say, okay, you know, I'm done with this, move on with their life. And then they get sucked into the vortex of chaos of, of a narcissistic ex, but they don't have that emotional entanglement with them that makes it uh, a lot more complicated. 
the point of this video is just to, to, to validate what you're, you're currently feeling to let you know that, you know, you're not alone on this, absolutely not alone on this. And that as time progresses and you, and you work on it, you literally have to work on it. And I'm, I mean, I'll just be, be crystal clear on this. This was not easy for me. Those first couple of years were a freaking nightmare. I call those my dark days. I got old videos about the dark days. And I felt, probably like maybe some of you are feeling right now who are watching this, that that was never going to go away. That that pain was going to be there forever. When you feel that or you're getting feedback that, that makes you uh, or reinforces that idea that you're, you're trapped in this mode, never to escape, that you're going to feel this pain and sorrow and this just heartache forever, it's really devastating. And it just kind of feeds back in on everything. And I could not, back in the day, I couldn't find anybody who could give me a, a really good answer on this that made sense to me. You know, the, the platitudes of, uh, you know, oh, time heals all wounds. I wanted to slap people when they said that. You know, it's like, well, how in the hell is that going to work? Well, time heals wounds because it gives you distance. And during that time, you better be working on working on your issues, your problems, I guess, for lack of a better word, that got you into this situation in the first place. You need to work on better boundaries. You need to work on your self-care. You need to work on getting to the point where you're okay with yourself. An example I'll give you is back in the day, being alone freaked me the hell out. And the idea of doing anything alone freaked me out. The idea, I know it's pandemic time, but you know, the idea of going out to dinner by myself felt unnatural. I'm like, what the, what the hell? Who the hell does that? That's weird. And I got to the point that I got okay with it. I got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm okay by myself. I can surround myself with really quality people. And if there's nobody to surround myself with and it's just me, I'm okay. I know some of you might say, well, yeah, that's easy for you to say. You have a girlfriend. True. We don't live together. You know, I only have my kids one week on, one week off. So for a week uh, now, at least, you know, before it was, you know, every so often. But I enjoy my my uh, my time by myself. I enjoy just in my, you know, I enjoy my space in my own environment. I enjoy my peace. That's part of this is is coming to terms with with that and and learning that that's okay and working through your anxiety with it. I, I'll give you another thing that, that that's another example. If the, you have to let me know if this makes sense. For the majority of my life, I have been filled with anxiety. I was always stressed. I was always nervous. I, I had sweaty hands all the time. Um, you know, I thought it was like one of those chronic illnesses, you know, it's like one of those things, maybe I needed some, maybe I needed some type of surgery. I heard you could do that. The thing, the reality is, or the thing is, is that I was constantly under a tremendous amount of stress, you know, just, so my story is this, the other day, Debbie and I went out to dinner. I know I kind of goes away from the, you know, going out by yourself, but, but we went out, we're driving back. And this car gets behind me. And I'm not a road rate person or anything like that. So this car gets really close behind me. Bright lights, right in my eyes. I'm like, holy crap. I look down. I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe I'm not going fast enough. So I speed up a little bit. And, uh, you know, look at the road. There was a solid double line. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, they can't pass because of that, you know. And I'm just, I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm just like, you know, I was considering like, hey, man, this guy really wants to get around me. Maybe I'll pull off. But the road wasn't really safe. Well, then all of a sudden, boom, lights light up. Initially, I thought it was a fire truck, but it was a California Highway Patrol. So I was being pulled over. So, you know, guy gets on a loudspeaker, you pull off on the next road, you know, so I pull off. In the past, that would have freaked me out. I would have been super anxious. 
And I'm like, and I mean, I was kind of like, oh crap, this sucks. I'm like, wonder what I'm getting a ticket for. And, uh, but I was okay. I was like, eh, whatever. I'm just like, whatever, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm not that worried about it. Guy comes up, you know, I guess I, what had happened is, is I had kind of weaved in the road or something. So he thought I was DUI. So he's like, uh, you know, Hey, you know, I, I don't even know if he asked why I pulled you over. He goes, well, I pulled you over because you were swerving lanes. I'm like, well, okay. He goes, uh, you had anything to drink tonight? I'm like, nope. I'm like, I don't drink. He's like, you don't drink? I'm like, nope, never. You know, not even socially? Nope. Which is, that's what's kind of funny about it because I don't. I don't drink at all. Um, anyways, so my point about this is that I was like, it, I, I wasn't even anxious about it. I was just like, oh, okay, you know, not a big deal. I mean, yeah, it might be some consequences, but my God, in the past... My heart rate would go up. I'd get freaked out. My point about this is that you are under a tremendous amount of stress. You are under a tremendous amount of pain. What you will more than likely come to notice with time is the person you were in the middle of all of this chaos is like the worst version of you. It's keeping you constantly, constantly stressed, constantly filled with anxiety, constantly wondering what's going to happen, not being sure of yourself, you know, dealing with these emotional games, always walking on, on, uh, on eggshells, so to speak, not knowing what's going to happen next. Take a deep breath. Give yourself some time with this. And I hope that by hearing this, maybe you can look at it and go, okay, you know what? With time, with some work, you know, there's a good possibility that my life is going to get better. And what the way I feel today is not going to be how I feel in a year, in five years. I'll tell you guys, my life keeps getting better and better. Um... You know, as things are shifting and some of the some of the other stress, not necessarily associated with the X, it, it's a it's amazing how I'm going through this transformation myself of things that used to bother me to where it's like, wow, you know, it's like I'm finally breaking free from all this and I'm finally really making some serious progress in my life. And you're going to make it too. May not seem like it may seem like I'm crazy. There's no way. Your story's different, Dwayne. <laughs> I'll tell you how many. I've talked to so many people. I've coached so many people who have experienced that. You know, a lot of times when I talk with, uh, when I do my collaborations with people, they'll say the same thing, that, that the life that they had before or that they have now, they never could have imagined or never thought was possible. So on that, curious how you feel about this topic. If this help, if this, if this is helpful, if it is, leave a comment down below and let me know. And uh, hopefully you're doing okay. And I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.